ladies and gentlemen, to Longbox Chronicles Month here on Reaction and Review. Tonight, guys, I'm not only taking a look at a movie based on a comic book franchise, but it's also a movie I found on Netflix. And for those of you who've watched this show for a while, you know that my track record with movies on Netflix is not that good. Almost all of my find for this series seem to suck. But I still have hopes on this one. As fading and as fleeting as those hopes are, I kind of hope this one's pretty good. The movie came out in 1996. It is based on a Dark Horse Comics series. The movie is Barb Wire. Yeah, guys, we're talking about the Pam Anderson Barb Wire film. I'm going to tell you right now, I do happen to remember ads for this movie running when it first came out in 1996. And when I say that, I mean I remember ads running on TV, but I have no memory of what the fuck the movie, or what the hell the ads were even telling us about the movie. I just remember that it's set in some kind of like a post-apocalyptic future. That's it. That is the only thing I, I fucking remember from the ads and from, you know, like the little blurb on the back of the fucking VHS tape when I first saw the thing at a bunch of my local video stores. I never got around to renting it, which is probably a good thing because now I get to watch it now. And you guys get to watch me either really enjoy it or possibly suffer. We are about to find out, though. So, without further ado, it's time to kick back, relax, and check out Barb Wire. Alright, I have to ask, is there a reason why we need Pam Anderson narrating over this scene, telling us exactly what was told, told to us by a different narrator at the very start of the fucking movie? I don't know why. I guess it just seems like kind of like a waste of time to me. Again, that's probably just me. Okay, do we really need the fat guy in the fucking gimp suit? This is probably one of the most off-putting things I've ever seen. Okay. And she just broke a paddle over the back of his head. Well... Good news is we're probably not going to have to see him again, so thank God for small fucking favors, I guess. Would it happen to be sad that the best actor in this fucking movie is a goddamn dog? I swear, guys, like, every other actor in this film is turning in a bullshit showing, and that fucking dog, within, within 30 seconds, has just outacted the entire cast thus far. That's kind of sad. Alright, I kind of have to ask this now because it's really beginning to bother me. At what point am I going to give a shit about any of these fucking characters? Seriously, I don't care about anybody here. I do not care about our, like, Nazi-esque fascist soldiers. I don't fucking care about barbed wire. I don't, I don't care about her stupid bar. I don't care about her fucking blind brother. I don't give a shit about a single character in this fucking movie because, damn it, the movie hasn't given me a reason to care yet. This is a really horrible sign, guys. This movie's putting me to fucking sleep. I really can't even fucking react to it. There's nothing fucking going on. I'm struggling to stay awake here. Jesus Christ. Okay, I really had a feeling this movie was, was going to be kind of shitty. I didn't think it was going to be this fucking bad, though. You know, guys, I would probably care a little bit more about, you know, Charlie's death if, I don't know, maybe we didn't see it coming from a mile the fuck away, perhaps maybe if he was written better, perhaps maybe if the actor actually cared about his fucking performance, but no, we have here a character who dies and not a single human being on the planet should ever in any way care, because this movie absolutely failed in making us care. Alright guys, the movie's finally fucking done. I'm gonna shut the shit off. Okay. Let's talk about barbed wire. I want to touch on writing first, because, uh, well, I always touch on writing, but god damn it, I have a lot to say about the writing. First of all, um, 
A lot of people would not know that Barbed Wire is based on a comic book character. It is one of the more obscure characters out there. So, to me, this sort of movie should in some small way be almost trying to advertise the book it's based on, or the comic it's based on, so that way people might be interested to go out and see more involving this character. Um... Mind you, I am not saying that, that you take a fucking miniseries from the comics or a story arc from the comics and try to turn it in, into a movie, but you try to but you but you try to build the characters in the world so that way if people were to see a barbed wire comic in a comic shop, they'd be interested in buying it. You don't have that here. Instead you have this horribly fucking written movie with absolutely no character build up at all all. So now, many people who probably would watch this movie are going to walk into a comic shop at some point and they're going to see a barbed wire comic sitting there. If, well, that is if they find a comic shop that actually even knows that barbed wire was published at some point, And they're just going to look at it and go, and the only memories which they're going to have are of this stupid movie and they're probably not going to pick it up. Mind you, I am at some point going to go out and I am going to buy a handful of barbed wire comics. Or I'm going to download them. I'm going to do something, damn it. I want to know if these comics are any fucking good. However, this movie was not in any way a good fucking ambassador for that. Uh, this, this movie goes to no effort to try to make you care about the characters or the setting. They go out of their way within the first... 15 minutes to give you the backstory of the U.S. as it stands in the year 2017 twice. But they don't bother to give you any kind of depth or any kind of, you know, reason to care about any of our characters. You will not care about Barbed Wire. You will not care about her brother. You will not care about the Freedom Fighters. You will not, you will not care about the government agents. You won't care about any character in this film, be they hero or villain or neutral. You won't give a shit because the writers for this movie obviously didn't fucking care enough to try to build up any of them. As for the story, the story is just absolutely boring as shit. We have, we have fucking dialogue, which seems to go absolutely nowhere. We have action scenes, which are so poorly done that they are almost guaranteed to put you to sleep. At no time should an action scene in a film be putting you to sleep. But that is not really the fault of the writing as much as it's the fault of, of the fucking effects team. However, the effects team can only work with what is on the fucking page. And if there's nothing on the page, then there's nothing for them to work with. So yeah, this does once more go back to writing. So we have this script which is so dead and so lifeless that nothing good could fucking come out of it. Which then leads me up to the acting. We have here a cast of people who have shown in previous films that they know how to act. And they know how to show emotion. But none of them even put in the slightest bit of effort. Pam Anderson apparently thinks apparently thinks, for whatever goofed-out reason, that her fucking performance here was somehow her playing a badass. No, you were not playing a badass. You were basically playing a fucking mannequin who was just shooting up shit. That was kind of it. She had no personality. She had no life into her, into her, into her fucking performance. And I'm going to say this again. The only thing in this movie that knew how to act was that fucking dog. That dog is there for like three scenes and out acts the entire cast for the entire 93 or 94 minutes this son of a bitch runs. There really is nothing here good in terms of acting and once more I'm going to say you can only really do 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 a passable showing usually if there's something on the page for you to work with. And if the writers are going to give you lifeless, bland dialogue, you know what? There, there really is only so much effort you can put into polishing, to polishing a turd before you understand that it's ultimately a fruitless task. So it seems to me that the actors knew that they were getting into complete shit and bothered to not put in any sort of effort. Which, frankly, is fine, because, you know, if I honestly were hired and then I were given a script that was this shitty, I probably wouldn't have put in any fucking effort either. Effects. 
we really don't have a lot in terms of effects. We have we have a handful of makeup effects. Uh, we and those and though and those look pretty good. All right, I am not I'm not going to lie. Those are okay. Uh, we then have a handful of stunt shots, like vehicle, like you know, like vehicle stunts, and those things feel so fucking lazy, uh, guys. At no time should you see a scene of a fucking of a fucking armored truck launching rockets at a bus and then f driving through and then driving through the fucking the, the the fucking fireball that build that builds from it and yawn. At no time should that ever happen, but it happens with this movie. The action in this film it feels so tacked on and so forced that once you get to those scenes you basically you, you you basically have checked out and you're just waiting you're waiting for the closing credits to start fucking scrolling and you're probably going to be asleep by then unless you have the patience of a saint and the willingness to wait so even so even in terms of the stunt work it sucks as for visual effects well the only thing was, well, the only things we have in terms of visual effects is in like digital effects and all that are things on computer screens, and those really are barely effects. That's just rendering shit on a fucking computer. So yeah, there really isn't much here in terms in fucking terms of you know effects and stunt work. And the only thing that actually was done in any sort of passable way was the makeup job on characters such as Barb's brother, who's blind. He has this massive scar down his face, which looks really cool, and his eyes are and his eyes are pure fucking white because well he was blinded by a fucking like government issue grenade or some such shit they 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 basically mention it once and then you just totally forget about it within 10 minutes but all in all that looks really cool and almost any time when a character has you know scars or blemishes or something which are which are supposed to look really pronounced it looks really good so yeah the makeup here gets a pass the soundtrack Soundtrack's kind of a mixed mixed bag here because we have a handful of licensed tunes which are like the actual licensed songs which sound really good. They sound they sound absolutely promising and I'm kind of happy for those. We then have a house band at this bar. The house band sounds like complete shit and they're basically a cover band also covering songs which normally would be halfway decent if the band playing them didn't suck whole hosts of balls. Then the bar also has a DJ who will who will play a whole lot of stupid like club like club and fucking like techno style music, most of which sounds absolutely shitty. And then we have the film score, which sounds like something which would have which, which would have, which would have been rejected from another Pam Anderson project called VIP, that god awful syndicated animated or not animated action show, syndicated action show VIP. It starred Pam Anderson. The music in that show was complete shit. And the score for this movie, the stuff that isn't just licensed tracks, is basically, it basically sounds like the kind of shit that would have been fucking rejected from VIP. So that should tell you the kind of low quality we're talking in terms of music. Frankly, guys, there's nothing here. I mean, okay, yeah, this film was a major studio thing, well, back actually when Gramercy was a major studio, and that in that far-flung days of the mid-90s. So it has so it has decent, you know, sound mix and the camera work is good, the lighting is okay. You know, there really isn't anything all, all ultimately special to talk about there. It's just everything else, the acting, the writing, the stunts, you know, like visual effects, all of that fails miserably at making this film even close to good. There's no way I could possibly recommend this thing, guys. In fact, out of all the movies I've covered in terms of Longbox Chronicles Month, both this one and back in January when I did this the first time through, this thing is probably one of the worst I've seen, second only to Scott Pilgrim. But then again, I'm kind of biased against Scott against Scott Pilgrim. So, if they ever decide to put this stupid thing back out on DVD or on Blu-ray or something, I have a I have a little blurb which they can put on the back of the fucking. On, on the back of the packaging. I want them to be honest with this. <sighs> barbed wire is almost as enjoyable as taking a length of barbed wire and running it across your wrists. However, doing, however, doing that would probably hurt less and your suffering would be over a hell of a lot quicker. 
Holy shit, guys. Words, words kind of fail me. I totally understand. I've been, you know, sitting here and I have and I have been bitching, but god damn it, I could probably sit here for another hour talking about how shitty this fucking thing was. And yet it still isn't as bad as some of the other shit I've watched this year. This thing is probably not going to make it into my into my bottom 5 this year, but Jesus Christ, if I actually were doing like a bottom 10, this son of a bitch would definitely be in there. I'm just going to say that much. Oh, God, this was fucking torturous. The worst part is, the next movie I have scheduled is also off of Netflix. God fucking help me. So, I have that to look you know, forward to. Yay. And with that, we come to the close of another reaction and review. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care and I will see you all in the near future. Peace.